Yehova Malak Olam Olamad Yehova Malak Yami Rakes Yehova Gadol Makarian Tios Yehova Adonai Yehova Elohim Kurios Tios Pantacreta Kurios Tios Pistos El Daat Yehova Adonai Eretes Monon Alatinian Tion Jesus Christos Hallelujah E. Basilia Kurios O Tios O Pantacreta Derek Emunabakar Mishfat Shava The Megalogai of Yahweh Lelion Elohim is always alive and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is god read and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Steady to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible and inerrant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkenu to the highest. And peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. And great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath. In the cherishing and in the nurturing of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. We don't deserve, we don't work, but yet it is the gracious grace of Lord God the Father who seemeth us fit to do His will on this earth. Honoring His word above His name, confirming to this unseen world the kingdom of heaven, and the kingdom of Lord God through the holy manner walk of life that we need to walk in this church age. In contrast to man it is God, in contrast to earth it is heaven. No longer the human viewpoint or the broken cisterns as they have drank the water as Jeremiah claims, but rather it has to be the living waters what they have to drink. Forsaking not the word what we have to learn as we are continuing in Judges chapter 2. The generation which arose knew not. They forsook the living Lord God. They forsook Azab, neglected. They came for apostasy to the court and they became destitutes. The same principle is running today in our pulpits. They are forsaking the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who is the only key for us to understand the will of great Lord God, the Father. As Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, prayed for us in John 17, 22, the glory what we have given to me, I have given it to them, so that they may be one and the world might believe that we are one, proving a further step for the indwelling trinity in our lives. The glory what Christ Jesus, our Lord of our God, had, as Isaiah chapter 6 notes, the word of Lord God in the humanity. That's what these people ought to learn. If we don't depart 
if you don't turn away from the lustful patterns of your old sin nature, the things what you sow, the things you will reap. Though you have been given this glory to be always in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and ask you not to grieve and squelch, neither resist nor wax, but rather you have been given this indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to be in absolute control of it. And look as Acts chapter 7 verse 56 teaches to us when Stephen was in the power of the Holy Spirit of God. He saw the heavens opened up and he saw the Son of Man that is Christ Jesus our Lord our God, the Huyon Son of God standing at the right hand of Lord God the Father. This ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit which is given for us in the church age could certainly lead to fully explore the deeds of the kingdom of heaven to the highest. And that demands every believer should be a scribe. And if in my country, India, if they could find Swami Vivekananda as one of the great men for them, the life of a scribe, how it could influence such man through Thomas Kempfus, gave for him to write in Anjadipa volume number 5 in page number 500 stating that if I have been at the time of Christ Jesus I would wash his feet with my blood because there is nothing furtherance from the truth since Christ our Lord our God is the end of all human wisdom. That is what a scribe can influence a man and every church age believer has been called to be a scribe so that you could be a perfect gentleman, perfect all the time in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, fearing not though there is much for us to conquer because with Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, all things are possible. And not being mindful about the things of God, you be mindful about the things of this earth and lose the work of Christ and end up your age as simply passing down your time under the sun in pursuit of broken cistern waters and in pursuit of your own darkened life of pleasures. So, dear brethren, we, the church age believers, cannot be so. We have been given the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, with a purpose. The glory what Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, had and he fulfilled. We have to get now the work of my Christ, my Lord, my Rock to be absolutely completed. Not even letting go an ounce of the work which has been given to us, but rather walking two miles, though he asks us to walk one mile. And represent the kingdom of the rule of God on this earth through our lives as we have been in the church age, as Kainikites is in the church age by representing the kingdom of heaven as the angels could ascend and descend as he says in John chapter 2. So now we through the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit could manifest to these people the things of the kingdom of heaven which has to be always righteousness, which has to be always the standards of great peace and which has to be always the standards of true joy in serving Him. So, dear brethren, the things that are so much essential in the Bible for us, to analyze and exegete, to learn from it and to apply to our lives, will certainly make us not to drink the broken cistern waters any longer. 
but to go back and serve my Christ. Though the invitation has been given in John 7 as well as in Revelation 22, 17, we have to go back and drink, not only just to drink, but to be completely satisfied as in John chapter 4, the Samaritan woman. Not only she drank, but she was completely satisfied. So the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, as we have been called in 1 Timothy 3.16, the Eusebion, Mysterion, the mystery of this godliness. And that mystery of this godliness demands justification of the Spirit. And that justification of the Spirit is what you and I have been called to be always in the fellowship of Him and do nothing but the will of this great Lord God the Father. For that cause, our tongue has to become the tongue of the learned. For that cause, every believer has to speak nothing but the truth, as even Ephesians 5 he says. For that cause, we need to renovate the standards of our thinking day by day through proper exegetical word being taught every day in our pulpit through proper isagogics and categories with the right dispensing technique of dispensations in understanding what are we in this church age till the rapture of the church which continues. So dear brethren, the things that have been preserved and kept for us on today's date, we shall have a word of prayer and continue. Use the privacy of your priesthood. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pallid wonders of this word which have been given for us. So that if we depart not from that which is hated by the Lord, He is going to pay us back what we love and what we make our lives to be grieving and squelching the indwelling Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Because with Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, there is no respecter of persons. What you sow, that you will reap. So better wake up in comparison with Romans chapter 11. Since you are a grafted plant, you are not the original olive, you are a wild olive plant. And be careful, he says. And in that carefulness, looking upon to sow only in the spirit and not in the flesh we shall learn the word of the Lord what has been prepared for us on today's date because those who are amatates and those who are asthenos they use the other scriptures for themselves as well for their own destruction he says in 2 Peter 3 if you are not a disciple <clears throat> and if you are not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, then you will not understand the mystery doctrine of the church age. Neither you will understand the powerful ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> but rather, you will end up in destruction of your own self because you haven't understood the great will of that great Lord God, the Father to the highest. We shall continue after this prayer. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again coming unto thy grace to learn the words. The mind of man is nothing but murder, Lord. What it can conceive or perceive or understand thy divine thoughts apart from thy Supernatural ability, ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit indwelling in us to teach the truth. And if you are in sin, O Lord, we cannot understand these things, neither we can concentrate on these things. Yet, Father, using the privacy of your priesthood, though we grieve and squelch and vex, we come back to thy presence, O Lord, because we are always rebellion and sinners in thy sight. Yet, O Lord, we come up with thy kesed and emeth in thy always continual grace every day for us. 
so that we could be the workmen on this earth and fulfill the work that has given to us as Christ Jesus our Lord our God said in John 17 4 I have finished the work given to him and not to be left half done to the section father the things that we're going to study today we pray that Lord God the Holy Spirit could enlighten and challenge us by this message in Christ's name we ask sovereign Lord Amen In Proverbs chapter 18, we need to know the importance of this tongue. Every word what we speak, if it is in, not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, not just in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, but rather learned Bible doctrine which you have to speak. The Bible doctrine which is nothing but exegesis. Because we have been said to shut the mouth of this foolish and ignorant people. This is the will of God the Father in 1 Peter 2. We have been said in Colossians 4, opening up your mouth it has to be divine oracles. In 1 Peter 4. In Colossians 4 we have been said, walking circumspectly, being wise men among these fools. Preach the standards of the salt or grace inculcated upon your tongue. And for that cause, he says, it's a day-by-day -day process of renovating. It's not weekly ones. Weekly ones is alien to the Bible. It's not a friend. The people in the present Christendom who are turning out to become more apostates than the standards of the Israelites, who have forsaken the true living Lord God. So, the denominations which have come for themselves which are not in accord with the word of truth. They have made weekly ones. They have come with denominations, but Bible doesn't recognize any denominations. Bible recognizes only one thing, exegeomai. And the time that has been given for us, though Joshua lived 110 years, in Joshua 13th chapter we read, yet there are many things for him to go and possess by his leadership. In the same manner for us, we are not having to stay over here weekly ones or in a month, four hours a day. Though Apostle Paul was teaching from morning eleven to evening four or five, sometimes extending it till to the late night every day in Acts chapter 20 verses 28 through 32. And there we read an incident about Eutychus as well, the man falling because the discourse was high unto the night. Every day is to preach minimum five to eight hours a day. And we are not able to match that speed. Because you come weekly once. And even in the YouTube, what we are preaching, it's hardly a one hour. For five days of our preaching of five hours will equal to one day of preaching of Apostle Paul. And Apostle Paul sometimes used to preach even eight hours a day. So when we can match, his one day is equal to one week for us. And he has taught there for three years, day and night, and then he completed to them the complete counsel of Lord God the Father every day. And then while he is departing, he says, I am pure from your blood. It could be upon your own head. I am not accountable for it. Because I have not shown to declare to you the entire counsel of Bible doctrine, but have completely, thoroughly declared unto you, in the span of three years, paying rent with his own hands for his house, what he was teaching there. He taught them the word of Christ. This is what the Bible teaches to us. Making it to become weekly ones. Making it to make for you to be four hours or five hours. If you have five weeks in that month, five hours it is. And you're spending your time as if you're going to live over here for a thousand years. Just imagine the speed. If it is for one year, 365 days, and for three years, it will be somewhere around 1,000 hours, a 1,000 days, nearly. What the standards of Apostle Paul might be for three years in that place, Ephesus, in Acts chapter 20. And if you would calculate those 1,000 hours into 8 hours a day, it will be almost all 8,000 hours of doctrine what he has communicated in three years. Or roughly more than that. 8,200 hours, sometimes like that. 
In the same way, if you would calculate for us now, having a month, four hours, and in a year, you have 12 months, you will get only 48 hours. And if you would calculate for three, into three years, it would roughly be for you around 150 to 200 of 200 hours of doctrine what you would communicate you are not even close to the one percent of his time what he would communicate for us in the span of three years if you would communicate for 8200 8, hours roughly 365 into three times then where are we matching his speed of teaching? How could this tongue become the tongue of the learned? Though Isaiah chapter 50 verses 4 through 7 teaches, I was not rejected, I was, I was not rebellion, I rejected not the teachings of Jehovah. Day by day I went with a great joy to learn the word of Christ. I never hesitated, I carried my cross every day and followed him. That's the great work being Christ my Lord in his flesh shows forth a pattern for us in Isaiah chapter 50 so that how this tongue should become the tongue of the learned and he says day by day day by day but this morons in the church age who are not even close enough to the standards of 150 or 200 hours in three years of their lifespan given in the church to give them the right word. How they could justify that they have trained them completely and perfectly in comparison to the time of Apostle Paul, five to eight hours a day when he was teaching. They are calculated for eight hours a day, 8,000. Or approximately you can go for 600 to 6,000 to 8,000 hours if it is for five hours or if it is for eight hours on an average in comparison to his way of style of preaching and teaching and being pure from the blood that could come upon your own head if you don't listen to those teachings then how we could say tomorrow lord we have done their work faithfully four hours in a month the grace given to you you are using it in waste and you are not looking upon the great and the true work of Jehovah as in Joshua chapter 13 Joshua was being told you are stricken in years in old but you have many things yet to possess you have many things yet to learn therefore Christ Jesus our Lord of our God in Luke 9 as well as in John 4 in Luke 9 he says to them let the dead bury the dead but you go and do the work of Lord God but the three categories of the people were rejected because they haven't done according to the will of Lord God the Father. In John chapter 4 he says, Do you think harvest is for another four months or six months? Open up your eyes and look. The harvest is already white. But the laborers are few. In the same standards for us, dear brethren, the grace of Lord God, which has been given, looking upon the time, we should make every believer to be a scribe. Every believer, like Thomas Kempfus, the man who influenced through his book, The Imitation of Christ upon, Vi upon Vivekananda of my country. And though he becomes an atheist, not believing any religion, though he has, for the sake of his name, the religion of this world, particularly this country, but he was a follower of Christ Jesus, our Lord. He did not say, if I were been born at the time of my Christ, though he was being in the presence of such and such many other men, like Buddha or any other things, what he might have thought about. He didn't take their name, though Buddha came earlier than Christ Jesus, our Lord. Because Christ, our Lord, our God, is the end of all human wisdom. All reasoning of man ends in Christ. Jesus of our Lord, our Savior. He did not quote to Buddha, he did not quote to any other person, but he quotes only to Christ. And whenever he has gone to any other foreign countries to preach, a Presbyterian or a First Baptist or any other things, fundamentals, Methodist, 
He said, I haven't come here to change, but I've come here to make you to be better Methodists, better fundamentalists. In the same way, that's the influence how a scribe can have. And they that are wise will be always in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And they that are wise will know what is the glory that has been shared with us. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> but many are like the foolish virgins who are living not to have oil in their lamps. As I've illustrated long back in one of our tape, you're having a motorcycle or a car with you or a four-wheeler with you. And in that motorcycle you don't have the fuel. And you're leading that or making that vehicle to be pushed for the end of your life from the day you believe in Christ. It may be 60 years or 70 years or 80 years or 100 years as well. And then you have been just pushing it rather than pouring oil or petrol in that vehicle, carrying you on that vehicle your wife or your children or your family. You just pour that petrol and the vehicle can drive you. But you haven't poured the petrol in that. In the same manner, you are having Lord God, the Holy Spirit, but no oil in that. You are being called to be the temple of the living Lord of a God, to be as a fire for Christ, as light luminary is being shined in the midst of this perverse and crooked nation generations. And Lord God, the Holy Spirit alone, can drive you, can lead you. And it can cause you to do the work of my Christ to the perfection. Because the good work, what Christ Jesus, our Lord of God, has begun upon you. It is you who is going to see its complete perfection. And furthermore, rather than being vehicle carrying you or driving you, it is what you are making the vehicle to carry without having the Holy Spirit of Christ. The oil operating in you or controlling in you. Though Lord God, the Holy Spirit permanently dwells in you, the controlling is temporary because you sin, you lose it. There is no excuse for us. Therefore, we call you to use the privacy of your priesthood and come back and learn the word of the Lord God. So many like foolish virgins, they don't have oil in their lamps and they have ruined their life not to become scribes and influence the people in the world and make them to become better believers, encouraging one another to carry their own burden and making in the entire world disciples for my Christ. And that's where the key when we look in Matthew chapter 11 in verse number 21 and following, comparing to John the Baptist, Christ Jesus, our Lord of God, talks to us many things. And he says, right from the beginning, it is the way how they have taken it by force. That is by their great strength. And what they have done by violence, what they have conquered, they have conquered the kingdom of heaven. And that's what he's representing them to look on this earth, the Israelites who have to be. As per Isaiah 51, 16, the words of Lord God the Father put in their mouth so that they could talk about the things of my Christ. But they haven't spoken the things of my Christ. They themselves became in search of broken cistern waters. Therefore, he says for us, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of Auronas suffereth violence, the Greek word biazo, to inflict violence. And the word meant to say, strength which has been used by a violent action, whether by body or mind, biazo. It's an activity of, it's an idea of activity which is called as a vital activity. And the violent take it by force, 
who are this violent biastes those who are strong and forceful those who are energetic those who are extremely applying their force and seizing upon so this is what we read and the violent take it by force harpazo the word meant to say to seize and to make them to be carry off so they pluck it up in that way or the word called us to choose by their vote and to elect the same things even in the present christendom every believer should be representing the kingdom of lord god every believer should be representing the kingdom of the heaven in the powerful ministry of lord god the holy spirit but their own ignorance and arrogance by violence and force not to become scribes not to become instructed as disciples and growing up as scribes and becoming like the master conforming to his image they themselves by force they are not making the kingdom of heaven to rule on this earth and they are not making the kingdom of lord god over the kingdom of men to be presented therefore in matthew chapter 7 when he teaches as well as in mark chapter 7 the men who are having their thoughts and their doctrines and their way of teachings they have replaced with what the real teachings of christ ought to be and they are taking it by what the same force therefore he says here for us the one who has been born least in this kingdom is far greater than john the baptist that's what many people don't understand when he is saying that the one who has been born among the women is no way greater than the one who has been born like john the baptist but notwithstanding that's what he says moreover he that is least that is micros of a small size that went to say what every believer in the church age by faith alone in christ alone who has been born though he is least in this kingdom that is what we are been there enjoying the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit is greater than john the baptist he is my son is larger than john the baptist that's the privilege given to us therefore he says if this people from the days of john the baptist until now if the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence when he courts from the days of john the baptist because he came to preach them in the wilderness a voice in the wilderness to lead them to go in the path of christ from there till Christ Jesus our Lord of our God suffereth now taken by force because of this Pharisees and, and Sadducees who haven't done according to the will of God the Father and he goes for all the prophets and of the law prophesies until John and if you will receive this this is Elias which was for to come he that hath ears let him hear and he says where went to shall I like in this generation it is like the children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows and saying we have piped unto you and you have not danced we have mourned unto you and you have not lamented for john came neither eating nor drinking and they say he hath a devil the son of man came eating and drinking and they say behold a man glutinous and wine biber a friend of publicans and sinners but wisdom is justified of her children again the word technon so here dear brethren the things what he gives as an example he illustrates to them that if you receive him he is the elias who came and then he goes on to teach to them from the law from the prophets until john it has suffered but in the church age the one who is least he can establish once again through his life the holy manner walk of life the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of god beginning with to be in contrast to man he will learn the things pertaining to doctrine the glory given to him he will begin to show forth the things of heaven as stephen saw and now the problem arises they may think is it possible 
with Lord God all things are possible. If you don't do that, then who is going to do it? If you don't live like a legend in the standards of the Rechabites, then the Rechabites could do it. Though they did not have anything to be concerned with Christ. Obeying their earthly father in their flesh, how much more we have to do? Though we have many things in the church age, being controlled of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, being indwelled of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the completed can of scripture, the prayer of Baltimore privileges to the highest. We are really inexcusable tomorrow to stand at the judgment seat of Christ and plead ignorance. We are all having everything for us. So we cannot go to say, Lord, because of this, because of that, no. Right now is the time for you to grow up as scribe. A scribe is the one who writes the word of the Lord. A scribe is the one who becomes the standards of great New Testament theologians. A scribe is the one what Lord God intends for everyone to be in the kingdom of heaven. There is an entrance for the scribes. The scribes have used his authority, he says, for us in Revelation 22, verse 7. Wherewith he says, particularly in 21.4, they come with authority to enter to the gates. They come with authority to go and eat from the tree of life. They have everything for them. Because they have done the will of God the Father. And who are the people who are outside? They haven't done the will of God the Father. Because right now on this earth, though we are in the flesh, it's a great testimony for us to live in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and manifest Christ completely formed in us. And we don't have this trouble when we go back home because the flesh is dead. But while we are still alive in the flesh, the power to the flesh is the old sin nature. He says, put it to death. And therefore we have this constant battle in the flesh. And that's the joy what we have. Every day having a battle to trample Satan under our feet. Every day Satan thinking to come up with new plans because it cannot do anything against the word of Lord God. Neither we can do anything against the truth, but we have to be only for the truth. If we would open up our eyes to understand as Philippians 1, 9 through 11 teaches to us, in all the fruit of his righteousness, then it demands exegesis. And if we are not walking according to the standards of exegesis, we are losing it to the highest. The cost what you are losing every day without exegesis, at the judgment seat of Christ, you will pay what have you lost. Because of your ignorance and arrogance, though Apostle Paul kept for us three years of Bible teaching every day, minimum five to eight hours, the church programs are being run for one, for one hour to one hour, 15 minutes in the present Christendom. Why will not, by force, the kingdom of men rather than kingdom of God rule? Because people with like-minded, with like nature, they come together and they say, we have only fellowship for half an hour of message for a week, and we have so many things for us to learn, that is, to establish their social club standards, and they continue with that. And as Hosea said long back, like people, like priests, the way how the people demand, the priest also continues, because he's happy with his belly, having his secured income and not at all worried what the church age is all about not at all worried what the kingdom of christ is all about not at all able to establish the standards of his truth and they will just continue and that's why we find in judges 2 they forsook they became azab, they neglected and they became apostates and they became destitutes. The same thing over here in the church age as well. Even during the time of Joshua's life, he says, you are old and stricken in your ages. But there are still yet a lot to, lot to conquer. And the same way, dear brethren, even we every day when we look, we have to think the day is perishing out today how to live that day, how to kill that day. We cannot let it go without getting maximum profit to Christ in that day. Because if you have been alive today, you should calculate that as if today is the last day of your life, and what will be your priorities? 
how much of your harvesting work is left over in the Bible through exegesis? How much of your scribe work is left over in the Bible by kneeling down and writing the word of the Lord? How much of the things, even when Job teaches to us, go back and ask to the beasts, ask to the flyers of the heaven. They will teach you about Lord God's wisdom, he says. Doesn't he say for us in Proverbs 4, go back and learn from the ant, you sluggards, how they manage their time. And if they know very well they're going to survive only for another five years or ten years, how would you plan your life? But though the Lord God says, your days have been numbered by me, your days will shine like the noonday when you have been there with me and doing my work. In Job chapter 11 we read that. But we don't want to do the work of Lord God and we want to do the work of this flesh. And though he says, go back and learn from those beasts, the cattle, the domestic, as well as the wild. Doesn't the wild teach you in Amos 3? Will it shut the mouth when there is a prayer for it? It will definitely roar. In Isaiah 1, using the same word for beast or for the cattle in the Hebrew, the ox knows its master, but you do not know who is your master. And coming to the fire of the heavens, the birds constantly teaching about the sacrifice of my Christ. And that blur, birds, including from there till to the small fly, house fly is what we call. Even the small fly has been put in Ecclesiastes 10.1. The dead flies will get along with your reputation. That is what the fragments of your life, what you have. If you do small, small, small mistake, even they, they're going to destroy your reputation, he says. The same thing. He says, come back and learn from flies. Come back and ask the beasts. They will direct you. They will shoot out and tell to you, this is the way, walk in it. But how sad it is for us to look that though in the church age we have been given the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and to do the work of my Christ to the highest, our tongues haven't been trained to become the tongues of the learned. And that's a great tragedy for us. Therefore, we have to look this Proverbs chapter 18. In verse number 14 we read, It is the human spirit which beareth your iniquity, therefore you have to fill that human spirit with the word of the Lord God, and you have to be free from the sicknesses of this world. Because the way you sow to your sicknesses, the way you will sow for not handling the time of my Christ accurately for his work, to purchase Kairos moments in his chronological time, the greater you are far away from the word of Lord God, the greater you will be in your sicknesses because your soul and spirit has to be fed with the word of truth. And if there is no word of truth, then there is no life in you. You are living a life like unbelievers, cosmos thinking. He says in verse number 20, A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. But we find in the Hebrew, from the produce of your mouth, that is the progeny of your mouth, ish, he shall be surfeited. The surfeiting is nothing but in his belly, the womb, he is going to produce progeny. The word what you read desires more word to be read. That's what the principle over here is. How do you get a progeny? One with one. In the same manner, Isaiah 50 verses 4 through 7. Day by day I come over here to learn the word of the Lord with a great joy. I was not rebellion. So when you come again tomorrow, you should be eager enough as Proverbs 8, 34 through 36 principle to be taught. Blessed are they that they wait upon the doorpost of the temple gate of my Christ to listen and to learn doctrine, 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 the discourse of doctrine. That's what he is teaching for us over here. The progeny of your mouth will completely surfeit or satisfy your womb. That means you are going to produce another 
word through the word of Christ and you're going to get your progeny. That's what Galatians 4.19 is all about. Christ could be formed in you. I am taking these birth pangs. In simple terms, if Christ is formed in you, you have to be a scribe. You have to follow Apostle Paul when he says, I follow Christ, you follow me. And coming to Ephesians 5 when he says, Dear, as technon believer in Christ, imitate Christ. He goes on to give you the principle now to imitate Christ. And in 1 John 2, 6, he says, You shall walk like the way how Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, walked. He doesn't call any other way now, only Christ, Christ, Christ. So in Galatians 4, 19, he teaches the progeny, what you produce, the birth pangs, what you take to produce in you the character of Christ. So, the progeny of the mouth of you. So when you open up your mouth, do you talk the divine oracles of Lord God or you talk the grace of Lord God? Or you still talk representing the human viewpoint? Or you still talk without exegesis the word of God? John 1.18 is the key. If the pastors don't come back and look exegesis, if they don't teach exegesis word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, they will perish. There is no substitute for it. Though they may be well established, though they may be thinking they are having so many testimonies to be followed for them in their life, that is only for the standards to please this world, but not my Christ. They may be great in the sight of men, but never in the sight of my Lord God. In order to be great in the sight of Lord God, it demands only one thing, dear brethren. Please, Christ Jesus, my Lord. If you are really pleasing Him, if you are really, really making Him to have delight in you, then you are really faithful steward of Christ so that the man could account that we are the stewards to communicate the mysteries, he says in 1 Corinthians 4.1. Before God and before man being approved. Hmm. Therefore, he says, the progeny of your mouth, it produces more words in your womb. Once again, the circulation of your word in your heart the generating point, womb is. The progeny of your mouth produces many words of Christ. Therefore, in verse number 21, he says, Death and Kaya, Mut and Kaya, are in the hand of tongue. <laughs> Lashon. In English, it says, Death and life in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. If you're not going for everyday exegesis and not fulfilling the work of Lord God, you listen to the foolish things of this world, believe lies, have the reasons in your mind, not to come back and learn that we are kinekatesis, not to come back and learn that the enemies of our soul have already been put to death. We have to just go march ahead and do the work of Christ which has been pending for so many ages, even in the past dispensation. And the work is not just to go and preach the gospel, but the work is to go and make disciples of all the nations. So the greater we reject to believe that the enemies of our soul have been cut off, as Exodus 4.19 teaches. Even the people who were seeking for your soul, I have cut them off. And calling us not to be just in the standards of Ish or Beno Elohim. As we read that again in Isaiah. Christ Jesus, our Lord of our God, was not the standards of Ish, neither Beno Elohim or Beno Adam, not Elohim, or sons of Adam. His work is different, he says, when we read that in Matthew 2 yesterday. In the same manner, we, the church age believers, are called to be the 
work of Christ Jesus from his own flesh and from his own bone, wherewith he could recognize us, saying that this is the flesh of my flesh and bone of my bones. And fulfilling Isaiah 61.10, the garments what we need to wear, the garments of warfare of the Lord. We have to go and conquer and get back to Christ, that glory of his name which has been blasphemed in the midst of this people. Because the man whom he trusted and gave him this power to do, he did not stand for the work of Lord God. Therefore, he says, your mouth has to be absolutely satisfied because it has to produce the progeny in your womb. And that progeny in your womb is nothing but as Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God says, for every Argatha's word, the words which haven't produced in them edification, you are answerable to Christ. This Argatha's word meant to say, which has not produced the character of Christ. Every Argatha's word. Even in the same manner he is dealing with us over here. Your word should produce the fruit. That means it has to produce in others the transformation towards Christ. They will be hard-hearted men. They will be stiff-necked men. They will be men to ask, is this there? What is it? How is it possible? Leave them for themselves to their own fate. You go ahead and march and believe the word of truth. Those who believe, they will be grateful to the Lord God. Those who don't believe, they will still continue in search. Because Christ Jesus, our Lord of our God himself says in John 8, To whomsoever I will, I will give these words. To whom I will please. It is you who has to send the hearers, not we go and ask them to hear. It is he who is going to give us this privilege to listen the word of truth provided. We are right and perfect in the sight of the Lord to listen and to have a clear heart, to understand and to strive to do the will of God the Father rather than to be in the standards of hypocritical mask. So Lord God searches you in and out. We just look out what appear and saying that these are truly believers in Christ. But Lord God the Father really looks into the inward of your heart. And if a heart is not in accord with the word of truth, if your heart is not in accord with the word of Christ, if you are not matching according to the will of Christ, never he will give you this information, though you may think you can get it freely. No way, no chance. The ways of Lord God are vast finding out. As those blind men in Genesis 19, they wanted to look the door entrance, though they have been blinded, so shall be your life. They have been given this greening privilege in the church age to be under the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And yet you lose it, because you have been blinded by your sicknesses. By that I meant to say your sin, uncleanliness. The same principle over here for us. The greater you fail to recognize the word of truth and understand it, you may appear outward to be good and beautiful to understand, but inward he knows. Therefore, you will not get this information, though you may be thinking you can easily get it. No way, dear brethren. Though they are few, they will be faithful to the Lord who walk in the straight road, narrow road. Because Christ Jesus, our Lord of our God, hasn't taught them on the streets, so neither we shall street teach them in the streets. Streets are nothing but broad roads. The broad roads are making you to be free to come weekly ones. Because the remaining six days, the pastor wants to be in his menstrual sickness. It's a spiritual menstrual sickness what they have. It is leaking for them every day. Therefore, they take rest for six days and they come only on the seventh day. And that's how the present Christendom has been led to come weekly ones rather than coming every day and learn the word of truth. The glory and the name, if it has been destroyed by your son or daughter on this earth, wouldn't you feel bad for it? Then how much more the name of my Christ and the glory of my Christ has been continually blasphemed and destroyed by the ages when he writes in Isaiah 52 5 
all day long every breath they are blaspheming the name of my Christ then how much anger which Christ should our Lord our God will have upon us and besides that you still go to become weakly ones besides that you still you still don't to become the tongue of the learned besides that you don't want to produce in your progeny the work of my Christ in the womb of the Lord and which way you want to be still, you decide. Because you're not answerable to me, neither am I answerable to you. We all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And I'm answerable to Jehovah my Christ for the words that I talk. The ministerial spiritual sickness, what every pastor has, therefore he preaches weekly ones. The blasphemy what these people they are doing by not making them disciples, by not making them to grow up as scribes. Christ our Lord our God took the thongs and cleansed the temple. Today through the word of Lord God it is a time for every believer in Christ to live one day at a time perfectly to the will of God the Father and go from milk to bread, from bread to meat, and grow up to become mature Christians in the unique spiritual life given for us, which we cultivated already. The standards of spiritual self-esteem to spiritual autonomy and spiritual maturity by Robert Bunker Thieme. And to grow up to become as winner believer in Christ. And if you still neglect to make up your priority number one to the word of Lord God, you will die in your own thoughts. Therefore it says for us in 1820 of Proverbs, the progeny of the mouth of a man shall be satisfied or surfeited completely in his womb to produce more words. And the words what he is producing will become the product of wisdom. And that's what his speech will be. The word says, with the increase of his lips shall be filled. Here it says, income of the lips of him, he shall be surfeited. The words what your lips talk about, the income, he says, the rewards, not only on this earth, even in the heaven to come, will be of a great satisfaction because, as he says in Hebrews chapter 13, what is the things pertaining to God, what does it demand? The praise from your lips of his name or thanksgiving from your lips. That will be the income, not only on this earth, even the things to come for you to be in the heaven. Therefore he talks, your mouth should be with the word of Lord God. Your lips should produce the income, which is nothing but the work of Christ. But the sad part with us is, as we read in Ezekiel 39, and when we come to verse number 24, he says, According to their uncleanliness and according to the transgressions I have done unto them, and I hid my face from them. Why it is according to the multitudes of transgressions or the multitudes of uncleanliness that Lord God would deal? And he hides his face from us. Because he did not spare his own son on the cross, then how much more we believers thinking we could represent the kingdom of God, we could violently take and represent on this earth the kingdom of heaven. But you have your uncleanliness. You have your transgressions. And you may say what it is, being not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit carrying your cross every day following my Christ. That's the greatest transgression what these people should enjoy today to look why the face of my Christ has been hid from their lives. Why they haven't made their mouth and their lips to produce the praise of glory of Christ. Every word you open up your mouth and talk, you should be accountable to the Lord God. Those just don't think you have lips and the master of a tongue to talk. As many people act in movies, as many people do comics and comedies. But this is the tongue, the tongue of the learned. Therefore, we should be very careful and thankful to Lord God to give us this mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who trains us up to do the will of God the Father 
and demands us, as Isaiah 52 11 says, depart, depart. Go out from such uncleanliness. Go out from such transgressions. When he uses the word in 52.11 of Isaiah, as we read yesterday, 52.10, because we are the arm of his holiness, and we read that arm having the Zara seed of his holiness. And then, so that all the eyes of the nations shall see, till though they may have the limits of this earth, that is their inner man, they search for salvation. Yet they cannot find salvation apart from us, that is Christ Jesus of the Lord. When we become like Christ of the Lord of a God and represent his kingdom, not only of God, this theos over man, but also heaven over the earth. Therefore he says in 511, soar, soar. Twice he says to turn aside, to turn aside. You need to turn aside in order to turn aside from your sickness. The sickness of your lives that is nothing but lies. Any false thing that is against the will of God the Father, that's your sickness, which is not in accord or matching to the mind of Christ. Therefore, he says, go forth you, that is Yatsa, exit from there. An unclean thing you shall not be touching, that has been defiled oneself, either by ethics or religion, or in fact, indeed, sexually as well. Unclean thing, that is anything which is producing not just spiritual prostitution, but spiritual menstrual sickness prostitution. So he says from there, unclean thing, you must not be touching, that is, you must not go to reach or strike it. Therefore he says, go forth you again the second time, exit out from the middle of it, not just the part, but the middle. <laughs> because we just think, forgetting the part is enough, but the middle, which has been concentrated in your life right from the beginning, that's what Christ Jesus, our Lord of our God says, put to death for that, which has been there right in your center. That's what people, when we ask the enemies to forget themselves and to forgive and to be in love, they may just outwardly forgive, but in the inner activities they will not. They will still hate that brother. But here Christ our Lord our God says, if you are departing, you have to depart right from the middle of it. You have to exit out. That meant to say what? Forgiven, forget it and go ahead. It's as good as burying it. It is no longer to be influenced among your old sin nature life. Therefore, your uncleanliness and your transgressions from wherein you are being put on, you should just get out from it. There is no excuse for you if you may think, I will do this, I will do that. No. From the midst of it, he says, go you out of the midst of her. That is any unclean thing you don't even touch. That is with defiling you. And that's what we ask you. If you are a pastor, teacher, or to be an occasional preacher, come back to exegesis. If not, better shut your mouth. Because you may think, you are really doing the work of Lord God in helping them, but you are helping them to worsen the condition of their soul and spirit. Because of your prejudiced minds, because of your thinking, because of your conclusions, but not looking the real intention of Lord God's will in the Bible, what he has given for us in Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. At least learn interlinear words and teach. Go back and dig the truth. You have great many Bible dictionaries for you. You have the great Bible, the Keyword Study Bible, Spiros Zodiathus. Learn from it at least, to learn the Word. And then open up your mouth, looking, what is it? Don't just teach with the stupid thoughts of your mentality. And you can conclude in that ways. But you're fed upon the lies which is not at all according the truth. Because some people think taking baptism, they could be saved. Baptism is a result of your salvation. Henceforth, if you live, you live for Christ. You die like a martyr for Christ, if ever you die. That's what baptism is all about. But these generations, what they have rose up against the will of God the Father, they think they take baptism for the sake of their marriages, for the sake of their salvations. <laughs> 
That's how the generation when they change without having their innovation upon exegesis. Without exegesis you cannot teach anything in the word of God because the base of truth for interpretation is exegesis. And if you don't come back to do that, your very word will be a lie. Therefore, any unclean thing, whichever word, because the work of Satan is to inculcate your mind with lies. He doesn't want you to always teach the truth. Therefore, he says over here, depart, depart, to depart you depart, or to turn aside you turn aside. Exit from that unclean thing, you shall not be touching it. Exit from it, from the midst of it, and you purge yourself, barar, be pure. It is you yourself, you have to rise up and purge. It is what we ourselves, we have to be controlled of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, using rebound. In the same manner, it is we, we have to wake up and look, because that's your life, he says in 1 Corinthians 3.10. Take heed as such how you are going to construct. As such how you are going to construct. It is you, it's your individual life. Therefore, they said in James 3, 1, not many men to become the preachers of the word of God. You have a very, very terrible and tough judgment at the judgment seat of Christ. Every Argatha's word you speak, which is not in accord with Bible doctrine, you need to pay an answer for that. Every Argatha's word. Every Argatha's word, which is not in accord with Bible doctrine, you need to pay for it. And the blasphemy he calls, anything against Christ may be forgiven, but against the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, shall never be forgiven. What is that again, the word? The word we find there again to come back for exegesis and teach. Because you have become a, a, a man called as lazy. You are not searching the historian behind that. You are not going to dig the truth behind that. And why is that? What is the work of a pastor teacher for you? You have time to spend six days for your leaky menstrual sickness? Or every day you have to dig, every day you have to learn. The toughest job on this earth is to be a pastor for the church. Not anything else than that. To train you up in the word of the Lord. Come back and dig and look what every word is. And tomorrow when we stand in the presence of Christ, indeed we have double honor at the same time, double punishment. Double honor to do the work of Lord God accurately, rightly dividing the word of truth. Double punishment for destroying the lives of this innocent flock. By our failure of understanding in exegesis, leading them to believe, do this and you will be saved. Rather than calling them, do the will of God the Father and go and make disciples of all the nations, wherewith... Christ our Lord our God has given such kind of a burden for the church age. Rather than showing them their life and not making them to be led in those things is what you will be facing tomorrow at the judgment seat of Christ. You haven't showed them what is the life. You haven't led them on that ways. Because you yourself being a blind guide, how you could lead others. And that's what he says in Matthew 12. Be aware about such men who comes, who lead you astray, but not in the truth of Christ. Therefore, from the midst you purge yourself, because they will carry you. And since in the church age we are the vessels of Jehovah, we need to make sure to be purged every breath of our life because we are being bearing the vessels of Jehovah. We are lifting up as vessels of Christ in the church age. Therefore, dear brethren, he teaches for us to learn the glory which Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God had. He has given that same glory to us so that we may be one and when he has given us to be his same glory why is it we are not able to walk the path of truth 
In Galatians chapter 6, he says for us, Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. The word in the Greek is koinoneto, which is let him be communing or contributing, or let him be the one to lay open to all, or to lay open to all. And what he is there? The one who has been instructed, kathos monos, which is in the standards of systematic theology, or to inform, to instruct, and to sow down in your ears. What you have learned, that thing, in the Logan, and to the one instructing in all good things, you lay open to all. What you have learned, go and make disciples for all the nations as scribes what you have been trained up. That's the simple logic. He says to the ones instructing in all good things, agathos, which is valuable, which is having virtue in it, and that could be for use. And that is what it is. We have been called the things that have been good of having very value, of intrinsic values. And that's what we have to do it. We have to be there to teach them, to roar like a lion and teach them, and to sow down into their ears. And we have to have to make every believer to be such an example of Galatians 6.6. 6. The word is for us to communicate koinoneto what he is being taught as kathogzontai that is our burden to sow down and to roar and to inform and to instruct you and to teach because of the glory given to us therefore dear brethren the key is knowledge of Bible doctrine because as the husband is the head of the woman so Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body. And the thinking what Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God has, we have to show it to the world and not the thinking of men. When we show the thinking of my Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, to the highest, then the kingdom of Lord God, the kingdom of heaven could be manifested through our lives. But at Matthew 11, he says for us, taken by force, the one who's having the strength, the one who's eagerly waiting it by chance of their election oath, they are making it and they're running the churches, like the committee members, which are not in accord with the knowledge of Bible doctrine, the denominational trends, which have to be changed, but they will not because they're having their standards of violent force. And this is how the kingdom of heaven, he says, has been snatched by force by these liars but rather we have to be the people to prove the kingdom of heaven in the church age because greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world making these believers to come to be in one accord in one mind in one truth to do the will of God the Father therefore dear brethren the things that have been given to us we should be the people not being seduced by false doctrines but rather we should be the people to learn the word of truth accurately and represent the glory of truth by departing from such things as unclaimed and departing by not touching those unclaimed things but rather purging ourselves to the praise of Lord God's glory. So dear brethren think over these issues because Every believer is the righteous weapon of Christ on this earth. Every believer has to be a scribe for the Lord God on this earth. If this believer forsakes the living water for the standards of lies on this earth, for what worth it could be used, it will be like a salt which has lost its savor, fit for nothing, but rather to be th thrown out in the same manner Israel history has been a constant warning for many professing Christendom Christians today. They are having to look Christianity as a religion rather than relationship. Having the root cause for all evil money to be their leader, materialism and the pleasures of sin. Though they not understand that these are the broken cisterns that cannot satisfy their soul. As though Christ Jesus our Lord of God said in John 7.37 on the 
last day of the feast of the Jewish, he stood out and cried out, saying, If any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. That same invitation is for us as well today in Revelation 20 to 17. Let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely, the life of true one. Not Bios, but Zoe. The life of water freely, so that the powerful ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in this Eusebion Mysterion, that is, the mystery of this godliness mentioned in 1 Timothy 3.16, the powerful ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, could be justified in and through our lives. And we, every believer could be like Stephen, Acts chapter 7, looking upon the things of the heaven and manifesting the things of Lord God to the highest and showing forth to this world what a powerful weapons we are once again to take back the suffereth violence from the day of John the Baptist till now, as he said. The same thing we, taking back by the knowledge of Christ in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, establishing over men the standards of God, and on this earth the standards of the heaven, as Isaiah 51, 16, we read that. My words have been put in your mouth to plant the things of the heaven and to establish the standards once again on this earth according to the divine standards of his glory. For that cause we need to arise awake. And they that are sleeping still not knowing the will of God the Father, it's a pity for us to show forth at the judgment seat of Christ, though much has been given, much has been expected, living not your every day as if it is the end of your life and preparing yourself to harvest the things in exegesis, you will pay. Dear brethren, this life is unique. Don't waste my Lord's grace in vain. Every breath is important. The breathe what you breathe, that's pneuma. It's the powerful ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. You may stay without food and water, but not by the breath. The air, what you breathe, is nothing but the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, after being believers in Christ. And before believing in Christ, the breath, what you breathe, you are alienated from the life of God, not knowing the purpose, till the gospel is given to you. And then you make it yourself to be steadfast, to, to live only the life of truth by the daily intake of Bible doctrine growing from milk to become strong believers to eat meat so what will be the fruit of your lips will your mouth produce in your womb progeny of greater words and have the lips to produce greater income to be satisfied at the judgment seat of Christ or revenue to be satisfied at the judgment seat of Christ or you will be still sluggards and lazy. And Job says in 2.7, Go back and look into the beast. Go back and look into the fire of the heavens. They teach to you the way of the Lord. And what else the nature can teach us being lower than us? We have been made lower than the angels, but the nature is lower than us. They cannot talk like us. They cannot reason like us. And that he says, go back and learn from them, as we are here to teach the fallen angels by judging them, so that they could learn from us right now through the church, Ephesians 3, the polypikilas, the much, much variegated wisdom of Christ, <coughs> through the church right now, so the principalities and the powers and the rulers and authorities could know we have been kept here to judge these angels. Shall we be learned by the insects or the lower creation than us? Or being lower creation in the realm of angelic creation? <coughs> shall we teach to the angels? Think about these issues. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Spirit leadeth us to the praise of His glory, what He has prepared and kept for us in tomorrow's date. And which way you want to go, dear brethren, you decide. It's left to you. <coughs> With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. Inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that you believe in my Christ, my Jesus, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior. That is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. 
This eternal truth for us for very simple, believing Christ you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Wherewith you shall learn to acquire the possession of the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Then for the pastor teacher, the greatest merit is to carry so thon long on. Herald the word in season and out of season, because the diamond from my witnesses is with you have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses is in the Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two diamond from my witnesses is our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, do not worry besides nature, the entire angelic coast will do witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brethren, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is for us to have fellowship through the word. What else can we ask, O Lord, in the powerful mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to represent the all the days of our life? And to establish the kingdom of God in contrast to man and the kingdom of heaven in contrast to the things of this earth by making disciples of all the nations. Father, we are much thankful for your completed word which you have given to us in the 66 books. Through proper exegesis, we could able to learn day by day. And at the Lord being faithful enough to learn the word, choosing us in a treaty pass to do their will. We are just thankful, the Lord, because we are unprofitable slaves. And we have to be the people to do that which is our duty to be done on this earth. At the Lord, many people not doing this. They have just gone astray. Help us to depart more and more into help us to depart more and more from the uncleanliness and to make ourselves purge every day, to be the chosen vessels of thee, to honor thee on this earth. Like the holy seed of you on this earth, in producing thy glory to the highest, which has been past ages not been given, but rather blasphemed. So, Father, search us diligently, and you know very well there will be always offensive ways in us, because we also in the human flesh do sins. Let the Lord cleanse us and lead us for thy glory, and see if there is an offense way in us, Father. Lead us in the way of everlasting truth. As David instructed his son Solomon, Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God, instructs the church. And that people have not followed by becoming professing Christians. Yet, O Lord, you come up with grace to train them, at least few, who could be chosen for you to walk in the straight gate. Provide them to understand the health is the word of God. Provide them to understand doing the will is our life and nothing else on this earth. To this extent, Father, we commit everything into the mighty hands and see if there is an offense away in us. Lead us in the way of everlasting truth. In Christ's matchless, pure, gracious name we pray, Father. The Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and let him challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen.